well, sticking with the government's handling of asylum seekers now, because the Home Office's plan for larger sites for housing migrants is expected to cost £1.2 billion pounds. That's according to a National Audit Office report. And that report which came out today says that the government has reduced the number of hotels used for migrant accommodation, but, check this, has incurred losses in the move to establish larger sites. Well, joining us now is human rights lawyer David Haig. Uh, David, good morning. What's your take on the figures in this report? Good, good morning to you both. I mean, I, you know, there was a rainy day in Cornwall yesterday, so I read the full report. And it's, it's, it's 52 pages of evidence of eye-watering incompetence. The figures are breathtaking when you look at the figures in terms of how much money has been spent and how much money is, has been wasted. Um, I mean, the, the, the literally eye-watering in terms of, also in terms of things like over budget, when you look at things that some of the Scampton um, and other camps that were budgeted, for an example, to cost 5 million, have ended up costing 46, 49 million. Crazy figures in terms of over-budgeting, over-spending, um, it's it's an absolute chaos. I mean, I, David, it's so good to have you on. You know, I sound like a broken record. I, I know that there will be things that you and I would disagree on. I stick my head above the parapet every day and say, yes, of course, as a country, we should take genuine refugees. But I will forever... I, I do not understand, my friend, how successive governments, not just this one, have managed to get us to a point where we have absolutely no processing system. We've got 170,000 people in this country, whether we know about them or we don't know about them, either getting benefits, hotel rooms, going on the Bibby Stockholm, because as the fifth most successful and financially successful country in the world, we haven't got a processing system. It's an utter disgrace. The money should be spent on, I don't know how you do it, I don't have that stuff, either destroying the Home Office and starting again or starting with a new unit that processes people. And if you are not... And if, if there is not a good reason, you haven't come from a war-torn country, then you have to go back. The government, to me, David, genuinely, should have worked out a processing system and come up with far more returns agreements with other countries other than Albania. We wouldn't be in this mess. Do you not agree? Uh, absolutely, Jeremy. It's, it's a complete disaster. I mean, I think one of the, the, the key lines in this report, and, you know, for anyone that's got a spare hour, it really is well worth a read of seeing how bad things are. The, the, the report, and I'll quote, it says, the Home Office did not understand the challenges it's faced. That's, that's from the National Audit Office. So not just our government, but also the Home Office is, is effectively not fit for purpose in, in, in terms of asylum. And that's, that's a real, real problem that we've got. And, and like you said, these things should have been planned. They should be in place. It shouldn't be that difficult to house people safely. It shouldn't cost the amount of money that it's costing. Um, and it, you know, these, it shouldn't these be that difficult for successive governments to have said, right, we'll house the people legally really... and we'll get rid of the people that can't. What I don't understand, I don't understand. I mean, the audit office is saying the Home Office isn't fit for purpose. Yes. Why hasn't a politician stood up in the last 10 years and gone, I'm going to start 2.0 Home Office because it doesn't work? I'm not sure it is successive governments. I understand there, has, there have been issues, but particularly when you look at the small boats crisis, that, that mm. didn't really exist before 2016. But I want to ask you, David, as a human rights lawyer, how much do you feel that here in the UK we are guilty of using asylum seekers and migrants, illegal migrants, as a scapegoat to blame problems in the country when, in fact, we should be turning towards, like you've said, reports like this that claim that the Home Office actually is unfit for purpose and doesn't really know how to set a budget or how to spend its money correctly. I think I think we're seeing, you know, I think, you know, obviously the British taxpayer here is, is, is a victim of this incompetence, but also genuine asylum seekers. There are genuine asylum seekers. There was a, a young lady that contacted me a while back um, and, and she's from Saudi. She's been on the waiting list, for instance, for a year and a half. It's on the face of it very clearly that she should be successful at asylum. Some of the things that are happening now, because we're vilifying asylum seekers, all of them, um, genuine ones and obviously the people coming across for commercial reasons, is that the genuine ones have been harmed. Her case was rushed through, obviously for Rishi to, to, to perhaps meet targets um, and rejected when it, even on the face of it, it really shouldn't have been. David, so can I we... jump in? Isn't that an interesting analogy though, my friend, picking up Nicola's point? You're saying that because the, the, the genuine are being rushed through that we're vilifying, the other side of the argument would say that actually we're allowing people to stay here who shouldn't stay here. But it does it not all, guys, come back to the same thing. We don't have an effective processing system. If you're genuine, absolutely. stay. If you don't, go. I don't understand it. I'm being told uh, to absolutely. shut up. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm seeing genuine people coming coming across my desk that really, or even very cursory look at their application should be granted that should be granted asylum. It shouldn't take a year and a half like it did in the case of this lady, um, you know. And I'm also seeing people that shouldn't be here being granted asylum. Absolutely. That it shouldn't be that difficult. We should be able to process applications in this country in a couple of weeks if we put the right resources on. And then that will have a, a you know a knockdown effect as well. But we just haven't done it. And we, you know, this report as well talks about the Home Office's new 10-year plan. Where was the last one? So exactly. Well, speaking of the Home Office, we had a right That's reply true. from them, which says, we've always been clear that the use of asylum hotels is unacceptable. That's why we acted swiftly to reduce the impact on local communities. While the NAO's figures include setup costs, it's currently better value for money for the taxpayer to continue with these sites than to use hotels. Not fit for purpose. David Haig, not you. I'm talking about the Home Office. Thank you very much indeed.